Welcome back to A Kentucky. Now, the issue that's talked the most about recently is, of course, Obamacare, health care as a whole. It is confusing, and you're involved in it in yeah. Washington as a congressman. Let's start with what happened last week. The House passed a bill that they say is to repeal Obamacare, but it's not exactly like that. So tell me, what did you think of the bill, but also tell people, what did it do? Well, among other things, what it does is uh, block grants Medicaid, which means instead of paying uh, and the Medicaid bills, whatever the states send up, it allocates a certain number amount of money to the states, and then the states can ch basically change the Medicaid system uh, and who gets benefits and who doesn't. Uh, it cut $880 billion out of, Medicaid, out of Medicaid over 10 years. That's about a 20% cut. So it cuts, it cuts a big group of Medicaid and then essentially leaves it up to the governor or states to decide who gets it? Is that kind of what you're saying? Right. And it also provides for a waiver system so that if a state wants to, it can totally rewrite the rules under the Affordable Care Act as to what the essential benefits package is, as to what deductibles are, as to what cap, whether there's an annual cap or a, a lifetime cap on benefits. So they can make it very, very um, restrictive and cut. So does it just punt everything to the states? I mean, it almost seems to me to, to, to make it to where your governor is going to decide rather than the federal government who gets what? That's pretty much the case. The okay. governor will decide. And in Kentucky's case, I think that would be disastrous, to be honest, because uh, Governor... He's uh, been ben, against Obamacare. He, yep, he's, he's said clearly during the campaign he wanted to roll back the expansion of Medicaid, even though there are 440,000 Kentuckians who now have health benefits because of it. So, it, but, and, and under the Republican plan, you can apply for a waiver, and if six months, six weeks, 60 days go by, the waiver is automatically approved. So you don't really have to meet the you don't uh, have to do it. meet any requirements. Let me ask you about pre-existing conditions. Mm -hmm. And I'm someone who has a pre-existing condition and saw his health insurance go down uh -huh, after yeah. Obamacare. With pre-existing mm -hmm. conditions, the Trump folks say that this bill protects them. Does it? Well, if the governor doesn't opt for a different plan then if you're insured now and you keep paying your premiums so you don't have any lapse in coverage, then you don't lose it. If you're a new person who comes into the system with a pre-existing condition and seeks benefits, that's a whole different story. So it protects the people who've already signed who are, up but not new who people? Who already have signed. Well, it depends. It's, it gets complicated. What they do, though, that they claim protects against pre-existing condition is set up these high-risk pools, which are dramatically underfunded, uh, across the country and high-risk pools have never worked uh, they're, they're not a, there's not enough funding to to accommodate the number of people who want to get into them and that's pretty much universally agreed universally they don't agreed. Work. in california they had one one out of every six people who tried to get in got in that's it so that's what they say protects the the pre-existing condition uh, but under the waiver system that's in this bill you can they can change the, ma the maximum premiums that could be charged, and also the tax credits that go to help subsidize. So they can make it. One example, one instance was if you're a cancer survivor, under their plan, and try to get coverage, your premium could go up as much as $140,000 a year. Good. If you had asthma, $5,000 a year. Let me extra. ask you a question because a lot of people hear this and it's very complicated. It I mean, I, I read some of it and I didn't understand yeah. it. You're the average person at home. Explain to them in sort of what they would understand. Why what the Republicans did is what you don't think should happen. Well, they created uncertainty in the market. Uh, they, they allowed premiums to shift in such a way that people who are older adults, 50 to 64, who don't yet qualify for Medicare, can now be charged five times what the lowest rate can be or more under the current system, only three to one. So if you're in that older group, you're 50 to 64, not only your premium is going to go up, it may price you out of the market. A lot of people that I've read say, look, if you're over 50 and maybe not wealthy, you're really the ones hurt the most by this. Do you think that's correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, a lot of people, and I, I actually think there's some truth to this, would suggest, okay, let's say you did nothing. Obamacare has problems that will self-inflict and that it will blow itself up. Do you agree with that? No, and this is a really important point, point to make. The problems that exist with the Affordable Care Act, and there are problems, exist in a very small sliver of the health insurance market. These are individ in the individual market. It's about 6% of the entire country. 
And yes, for about half of that, premiums are going up a lot and there are no tax subsidies to help them. So there's a real problem with that affecting that small percentage of the population. But by and large, everything else has worked fairly well. Medicaid's worked fairly well. The Medicare changes under the ACA have been very successful. New, more benefits for seniors. Um, they reduce the donut hole, so prescription drugs aren't as costly for uh, seniors. So there's really not much to, to change. So why not fix that? Exactly right. That's okay. What, that's what we're right, saying. All right. So let, now, the, now you, it's going to the Senate. Do you yeah. think the Senate will pass this bill? They're, they say they're starting over. So does this mean that this bill is irrelevant? What the House passed? It is largely irrelevant. Okay. So yeah. the Senate will they pass a bill that you think will help? Here's what my prediction is. Okay. My prediction is Mitch McConnell doesn't want any of his members to take a vote on health care. It cannot be anything but negative for their chances at re-election, particularly those who are up next year. Um, I think they will slow play this as long as they can. And do nothing? And do nothing. If they do something, it'll be something simple like eliminating the employer mandate, which I think you actually could get Democratic support for because it okay. doesn't, doesn't seem to be necessary uh, under the current situation. So they'll do something that looks like a significant re uh, change, not much, but not something that will hurt anybody. Let me ask you this, and I, 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 I've often wondered, let's say that you just fixed it what's really fixed and change the name to Trump Care. <laughs> no, I mean yeah, that because right. clearly for Trump, that's what matters to some extent. He just wants a win. He so just, let's right. just say, would you be willing to do that? Say, look, let's fix these 6% and if you want to call it Trump Care, call it Trump Care. Absolutely. We, we can do it because what, what we need is there were, there were something in the original law called risk quarters. So they were payments by the government to insurance companies if they got an abundance of sick people rather than the right yes. balance and lost money. Republicans defunded that. It's the main reason that the, the individual market's gone bad is because those risk corridors uh, uh, disappeared. And then there's some other things, these what they call cost sharing reductions that help people pay for their deductible low income people. Restore those or make sure they're being paid and you're going to fix the and individual fix market. And then everybody wins. Yeah, but everybody is there wins. any chance that happens? No, <laughs> I don't think so. All right. So ultimately, at the end of the day, you think nothing happens? I think nothing happens. By the way, the one thing that we don't do and nobody's talking about, we don't get at the real drivers of health care costs. That's what we ought to be Which focused on. Which is the on. cost. The drug cost the drug and cost. hospital, hospital costs. I think Those everybody should agree to that. Right. Because things we cost should be willing to do that. work on that. All right. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about some things a little less serious with Congressman Yarmouth. This is Hey, Kentucky.